the shape that basically concentrates a series of microsolvers. These six are the most relevant for controlling the shape of your, of your simulation. And these are microsolvers that you actually have separate. If you go here to microsolvers, you have a bunch of them. These are all here. We're not gonna, we're, for now, we're just gonna use these here. They're more practical. And for this introduction, it's uh, more than enough. Now, the dissipation is gonna do, as it says, is gonna be responsible for dissipating and taking off some of the density of the simulation. If we set the dissipation to one, for instance, we won't see basically anything. We're, we're gonna be seeing the smoke disappear very fast. Okay. We will usually want a low value of dissipation. We don't want it to disappear too fast, but we do want it to kind of disappear a bit. Now, the next one that's really important is the disturbance. Disturbance is the, the microsolver that we're going to be using to get rid of these kind of buffs, mushroom shapes. We want to break this out a bit more. Okay, these are very regular shapes. So, of course, if we add more density here on the, um, the resolution of our, of our simulation, let's see, when we get all the way up to here, we have... We don't have a lot of voxels, so we could make this a bit more dense. Let's reduce this to 0 0.02, so we have a bit more resolution. And it's going to be important for us to be able to see the effect of the disturbance. Now, the disturbance is going to act... You can tell the disturbance to affect velocity or the temperature. Now, uh, this cutoff just means... Um, the disturbance is going to happen wherever you have a density that's below 0.15. Okay, here on the bindings, you have the threshold field by default is density, and that's what's going to happen. So all the areas that are below 0.15 will be affected by the disturbance. So we should see that the disturbance happening more on the edges of the, the volume. Next, we have the block size. And this is basically similar to the element size that you have on volume or noises. Pretty similar. So we're going to, considering the scale of this, so if uh, each one of these square, squares is 0 0.2, so you have a pretty good idea of what's the scale of this. It's kind of big. It's still big for the type of simulation that we have. So I'm going to lower this to 0 0.1. And let's, let's leave the, dense, the intensity at the default value of 0 0.5. And as you can see, it completely shatters the shapes that we have. 0 0.5 is uh, very much, it's, it's a lot. But you can see the scale of the detail that's being applied. And I think the scale isn't bad, but the intensity is very, very big. Let's go 10 times less. That should still break up the shapes that we have enough. Okay, so we don't have such well-defined silhouettes of uh, mushrooms. Okay, we're breaking that apart. Let me move the grid. Okay, so I don't have enough cache to kind of cache all this out. I'm going to reduce the length of the simulation to 72 apply, close, and maybe here on the resolution, go back to 0 0.025, just so to make sure that I have enough to kind of cycle through all of this. Yeah. Maybe you can even go a bit further, 96 maybe, apply, close, see if it if I have enough memory to cache all this. Yeah. Okay, so this is disturbance. Very important and very useful to break up the, the these shapes into smaller shapes. 
you can compare with something like 0 0.05. And we're going to get a, a smaller kind of type of breaking, which is also interesting because we kind of preserve a bit more of the big shape of the, the volumes. And you can always play with the intensity as well. So 0 0.1, it's going to break a lot more. For me, it's too much. 0 0.1 is a bit too much. So I'll go back to maybe something in between 0 0.075. Now, I'm going to disable the sermons so that we can have a look at turbulence, which is also very uh, useful. Turbulence will commonly be used for bigger dis types of distortions. Let's go to the turbulence. These parameters should all be kind of familiar. And uh, let's say the swirl size is one meter. Let's make it zero point. Well, let's make it bigger, two. Let's make sure we have a good amount of turbulence, zero point five let's see what this gives us well remember i don't have any disturbance on this and you can see what's happening okay a lot of turbulence but the scale is much and the scale is much bigger than what we have on the disturbance maybe uh even bigger and maybe just a bit more grainy or a lot more grainy an impulse length a pulse length of one so it's it doesn't change as fast completely insane and uh, let's see if we just give it something a bit more reasonable 0 0.05 okay so this is the shape just being distorted by uh, the, um, the turbulence I'm gonna make let's see how this looks in real time it's still very strong I'm gonna uh, make the grain a bit, a bit smaller, the swirl size maybe a bit smaller, and the intensity 0 0.01. And maybe the pulse length could be bigger, let's see. Okay, so we have something, but it's not as drastic as it was before. Remember, we don't have any disturbance here, just turbulence. I think it's cool. Let's try again with swirl si a bigger swirl size. Maybe a bit more granularity, grain. Check it out. You can also increase the number of turbulences, layers of turbulence. But we're not after small detail on this. But I think this, this looks actually pretty nice. Maybe a bit too strong still, but uh, I'm going to leave it like that, like this for now. And let's turn on the disturbance now. Let's see how this looks all together. The disturbance is too strong. Let me put this back to 0 0.5. So we have some nice interesting motion and some kind of big turbulence affecting the storing a bit, uh, the basic simulation. Okay, and these are the main parameters that we're going to be using to control the shape. Dissipation, disturbance, and turbulence. 